We're here, Radio Row, Super Bowl 57. The Chiefs and the Eagles set to take on one another in a battle for what we've got right here. Yeah. Some, a little bit of jewelry, Marshall Newhouse, Super Bowl champion with the Green Bay Packers. Yeah. And this is uh, one of those things where you, you happened, you were, you were pretty young yeah, when, when you got the ring. Does it, did it feel like, hey man, like we got Aaron Rodgers, like we're gonna do this every year? Uh, yeah, after that year, you're like, oh man, this happens every year. It's pretty easy, right? But as, as we know, it's just not. Even to get back to the to the actual Super Bowl, it's pretty tough. So um, we had some talented teams there, and I've been on other talented teams. But you know, it's just it's a full team sport, and it takes so much luck and good fortune um, to get to the, this ultimate game and then win it too. So. What, what do you think is the difference between like where, where you when you do win it versus when you come up short? Is there something you can ever point to to be like, okay, yeah, this is this is why it didn't happen for us? Man, there's just too many reasons. There's so many, you know, it could be health injury stuff. It could be, you know, one side of the ball is underperforming or just has a bad game, especially when you're in the playoffs, it's one off, um, single elimination. It just takes one bad game. And, you, you know, th for example, 2011, the year after the Super Bowl run, we were 15 and one. We're like, mm -hmm. we were very obviously the best team in the league, got the first round by and just had a bad game at home against the Giants who go on to win the Super Bowl. It just, it could be something as simple as that. You know, sometimes you can't fully explain it, but it takes a lot. So that's why you should appreciate wins and teams that make these runs. And it's hard to do. I, I was going to ask about that. Like, how hard is it to appreciate it in the moment as it's happening? Like, it, like, this is common in every walk of life, right? Like, you don't know how great you have it until you don't have it anymore. So do you have to try and find time? Is that something you learned as you got older to appreciate the winning? Yeah, as I got older, I appreciate it. When you're young, you just you have no, no idea. <laughs> Like I say, you're drinking from a, 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 a water hose all the time. You just, you're just trying to <laughs> not be in the way, try to find your footing, make an impact, kind of, you know, prove you belong. You have, you don't have as much perspective to really take it all in. But yeah, as I got older, I've got, you know, I've been traded, I've been cut, I've been everything you can do in the NFL. I've, I've done, and so I have appreciation for what it takes to win. I made the playoffs like 10 of 11 years, and so, you know, I, I understand that now. But it took a while. It took some years. Playing offensive line is is kind of like being a plumber. Like no one no one really appreciates you until they absolutely need one, <laughs> and and they only call you if something's wrong, right? Like right. that's that's one of those things where you're going to face much more criticism than you will credit. You're not you're you are not going to get credit for 2011 when Aaron Rodgers played like Aaron Rodgers. So yeah. how do you how do you find the joy in in the work? Yeah, you know, it took me years to figure that out too, because you know, I there were times on really good teams where I would struggle when I took too much of the negative and in, in, internalized it and that you know affected me. I didn't know any better, but as you get older, you realize how to compartmentalize. You realize how to self-evaluate. I was honest with myself, but I knew I belonged I belonged here in the NFL and you know, different teams I contributed in different ways, but you know, you just, as the years go on, you, you, you get more comfortable with yourself and your abilities. You're honest with yourself about your shortcomings and you're like, you know, what, where's the value I bring in this team? Is it, for me at, at times, it was as a swing tackle. Other times it was as a starter. So you just figure out your role and you try to do your role to the best of your ability. I mentioned Green Bay Packers, but sure. I mentioned the Green Bay Packers, but but you played for a quarter of the league almost. Is that right? Almost, yeah. So what what did you find was the biggest difference team to team? You don't have to be as you don't have to be specific unless you want to be specific. But what what did you find was the biggest difference? Yeah, just different cultures and like the way they ebb and flow. I mean, you know, from being in New England to that's the you know the they call it the Patriot way and how Bill Belichick runs things from top down uh, to being at the time in Oakland. Head coach was Jack Del Rio. It was a little little looser. You're in California. A really talented team, but just different vibes all, all over the place. And then I was fortunate enough to play for all fame coaches and quarterbacks. So different quarterbacks who, you know, had different levels of ownership of their offense and of the team. And, you know, each place is different. Each place finds kind of what they do best and they kind of lean into it. And there's a lot of different ways to win. Um, absolutely. So, you know, I, I take that with me. You know, I think my path is pretty difficult. I wouldn't recommend it. But I, I, I got to a certain point where I was like, all right, I'm going to lean into this. This has become kind of who I am. I'm going to make it a strength and I'm a versatile person. Um, I can learn things quickly. I'm accountable and I'm a, someone you can trust. And so that was kind of what I learned as I kind of went on. But each place has its own little flavor. It's only, you know, the cities have their own vibe and their own relationship with the team. So that was fun to kind of experience that. You know, I'm like the Ryan Fitzpatrick of offensive linemen. And, you know, you get to experience a lot of different places and, and, and compete and, and, and meet a lot of people on the way, which is really cool.
You got to keep growing the beard out, though, if you want to go the full <laughs> Ryan Fitzpatrick on that I one. I'm not committed fully to the beard like he has. That's true. <laughs> Can you give me a little insight, you know, compare and contrast? Because you played for some quarterbacks that, that people know the names of. Mm -hmm. And so can you just give us a little insight on some of those differences? Yeah, I mean, each one, you know, they're all, the, the uh, to me, the top 1% of the 1% in the world of competitive people. But they all kind of went about a different way. You know, I spent uh, an off season basically with Drew Bees in New Orleans, and he's different um, from competing in ping pong to competing in, you know, in the film room. And then I wasn't there for that long, but being in, let's you know, say Aaron Rodgers to Eli Manning, Eli Manning, who we're now all seeing his personality on the other side of things, but he was a, a staunch competitor, man. He could prepare like no one else, but still was kind of a kind of good old boy, loose uh, personality, but, uh, you know, was looking to put the dagger. I mean, he was a comp ultimately a competitor. And so each quarterback has their own version of that. Tom's was a little more intense. Eli's not as much intense. Um, Derek Carr's not as much intense. Um, you know, a guy like uh, Cam Newton, more intense. So it's just like yeah, different, you know, it's like ice cream, different flavors, but had so many great quarterbacks, different styles, um, different approaches. But most of them, I say, also cared about their teammates deeply. Um, different ways, they showed it in different ways, but, you know, you could tell the way they kind of encourage young guys in the locker room to bring them along, especially, you know, especially when you need them to contribute and to how they kind of treated people, you know, in the facility, the people that, you know, that, that clean the lockers and stuff like that. It's just each guy had his own way of doing things, but he was uniquely them and it, it led them to the success they had. What do you make of some of the criticisms of Aaron Rodgers and his leadership style, the relationship he has with his teammates? This, it blew up that like he wasn't hanging out with Romeo Dobbs, and, and Romeo didn't seem to have a big deal with it for the record. But what, what do you make of some of those criticisms? Yeah, it's just unfair. I, you, know, he, you know, as a quarterback, I, I know he knows, he understands. There's a, a bright light on you. He's been around long enough to understand that. But to me, it's just so much of the criticism of him is without context. It's just, it's just it's kind of weird to me because, you know, his style is his style, and there will be plenty of people, for every one person that, you know, quote unquote, might say something maybe harsh about him or crit critical about him, especially someone who's in the locker room, there's 25 guys who would say the opposite. who are like, he's a great teammate, I uh, love that guy, play, do anything for him. And so to me, that's to, what I take away from that. I played with him, he had a great relationship uh, in the locker room, and not like, I had the, the privilege of learning about the NFL a little bit before. My cousin Robert played in the NFL. Um, and I learned a lot from my dad, who's a coach as well. And it's like, listen, you're not going to like like and every guy in the locker room. There's too many conflicting, strong personalities. But can you be a good teammate? Can they be a good teammate? And I learned that. I knew that going in. So some guys, you have a relationship that feels like, oh, this kind of bleeds in off the field. Some guys, it's a working relationship. But if it's positive, that's a good thing. That's ultimately what we're going for. And I never had doubts about Aaron's, you know, working relationship with, with other players. And, you know, he just takes – Listen, he puts himself out there in a lot of ways, but he takes way too much criticism for that stuff, especially when people don't know the full story. They're not on the inside. So it's unfair in, in, my, in my speech. If, you know, some of it has been from, from teammates. So mm -hmm. can, can you just put yourself in their shoes and say, okay, from their perspective, I understand this. Like, what, what would it be that you'd go, okay, I understand how that's not right for everyone because mm -hmm. people get led in different ways too, right? Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, specifically with, with, with Aaron, he just, you know, he was so competitive. We competed in, in walkthroughs. He competed in <laughs> right. jog throughs and stuff like that. And so and then if he wasn't the most jovial person, which I always found him to be, you know, pretty lighthearted. But some guys, you catch him on the wrong day, you think maybe you, you, you exacerbate that. You take that to the full extent and you think that's him fully. And you just you got him on the wrong day. And uh, some people just honestly weren't going to vibe with his style, especially if they're a guy who maybe wasn't accountable because Aaron held people to a high standard. Yeah. His receivers, you know, guys who he, he called out and he wanted to bring along, but it's in the, the vein of winning. And so maybe some people don't receive that well. I say the same, you know, in a similar vein to guys who would leave New England and be like, that place sucks. It's, you know, and I get it, but from my experience there, if you're not a slappy, we call them slappies, you know, if you, if you don't mind some, it's demanding place. It is not for everyone. But if, you know, to me, that wasn't a, a, a necessary criticism because ultimately guys who love football, it didn't bother them, at least in my opinion. So, yeah, listen, different styles all over the place. He's the strongest personalities in the world. You need that. And each guy needs to own their own thing because to win and, and be successful for a long period of time, you just have to be yourself. It's, it's too hard trying to be someone else you're not. All right, last one. I want to stay on the Aaron Rodgers thing for a second because we hear how hard it is for offensive linemen with a guy who – now, he doesn't move like he used to, mm. but the, the second reaction plays, the extending the plays, 
that, that takes a, a, a feel, and when he breaks the pocket, you can't have your hands on or mm. you're going to get called for holding, yeah. that kind of thing. So what do you think is harder as a young player, to block for Aaron Rodgers or to catch passes from Aaron Rodgers? Ooh, that's a good question. You know, I, I can speak for myself. I wasn't a receiver, but I was a young guy who was learning kind of Aaron's feel. And, you know, he was the best in the league at extending plays. And sometimes as a lineman, that begins to be a protection that lasts five, six, seven, eight, nine <laughs> yeah. seconds. And listen, sometimes that just didn't always look the best, but you, you know, I tried to adapt and stuff like that. A guy like Bakhtiari came in and was, did a really good job of that. Some linemen before and after me didn't do so good. So yeah. it's just a matter, and then and to counteract that, you know, I went to Tom Brady who his foot hit at, at nine yards, he stepped up to seven, the ball was gone in two and a half to three seconds. So, and they both had success. So it's just different styles and yeah, definitely harder as a young guy to, to adjust to that. Um, especially it not being on schedule and things being a little more, you know, um, freestyling, but Ultimately, you know, he wanted to win. He was successful at it. And you're like, I'm going to do whatever I can. Sometimes you get a holding call. Sometimes it doesn't look pretty. But if I give him the extra half a second and he makes a play, it was worth it.